Right, okay, so welcome Year 11 to our remote lesson uh, on uh, genetics, variation and evolution. So this is going to be our first lesson out of the two, and this one's going to be about antibiotic resistant bacteria. So before Christmas, uh, either you were in the lesson or you did it remotely from home, I taught you about the process of evolution by natural selection. Now the next few lessons that we're going to do, including the two today, are focus on some of the evidence that we've got to support this, you know, this quite extraordinary theory. And one of the one of the biggest, most compelling bits of evidence is the presence and the evolution of these what we call antibiotic resistant bacteria. So hopefully from your previous knowledge at GCSE all the way down at year nine, you should know that antibiotics are, are chemicals, they're drugs that specifically kill bacteria and bacteria only. You know, might be saying, oh, why don't we use them for coronavirus? Well, coronavirus is a virus, so antibiotics will have no effect on them. And also because viruses live inside our cells, it's going to have no good. However, bacterial infections, which in the past killed hundreds of millions of people, a lot of them have been eradicated, or at least the dangers of bacterial infections have been diminished by using antibiotics. And in fact, they're probably responsible, one of the big reasons why we have such a large human population, 7.7 .7 billion people, is because of antibiotics, the discovery of those scientists, like Alexander Fleming, that have actually enabled people to basically stop dying from bacterial infections. Things that would have killed millions of people in the past, no longer an issue. The problem is we've been using them too much and we've been using them wrongly and the bacteria are, have evolved now to become resistant. Now we don't use the word immunity for bacteria because they haven't got an immune system, they don't have white blood cells, they don't produce antibodies, so immunity is the wrong word. Instead we use resistance and what that basically means is that certain types of bacteria have developed the ability to not be killed by certain types of antibiotic, making them much, much harder to treat. At present, now I can't remember the exact value off the top of my head, but it's probably something like 200,000 people per year around the world die as a result of antibiotic resistant bacterial infections, things like MRSA, C. difficile, etc. It's estimated by 2050 that that number might be as much as 20 million people because as these bacteria are evolving and becoming more common and more widespread, our treatments are going to become less and less effective. All right? I don't know about you, but I'd be terrified, terrified by, say, the Black Death, which the bubonic plague, which is, was, is, was and is caused by bacteria. If I was to catch bubonic plague now, I'd be worried, obviously. But if I went to the doctors and they gave me antibiotics, get over it. Cured from the Black Death. But what if that bacterium became resistant to antibiotics? It'd be quite scary. So, the reason that they've become resistant is through natural selection. So we're going to apply that model that we learned before Christmas to see how natural selection has made these bacteria evolve and become a danger to us. So we're going to cut to that now. So I've started by including some but not all of the natural selection model. I'm going to add to it as I discuss with you. So to begin with, we've had to have had a mutation a random mutation that has given one bacterium an allele, which remember is a version of a gene, that makes it resistant to antibiotics. Okay? The rest of the bacteria are not resistant to the antibiotics. So imagine I've got a population of bacteria living in my body, you know, maybe I've got tonsillitis or something. There's a possibility that when the bacteria divide, one of them might end up having resistant antibiotics. Then I might take a course of antibiotics. I'm feeling ill, so I'm going to take these antibiotics. So we can hopefully guess what's going to happen to these non-resistant ones. The non-resistant ones are going to die. They're going to be killed off very quickly. Okay? Whereas my resistant one <coughs> in that population will survive. Not only is it going to survive, oh, that's not, too many eyes in there, get rid of that. Not only is it going to survive, you know me, <clears throat> it's going to do really, really well because I've got rid of all of its competition. There's no competition for food or auction or anything like that at all. It's perfect. So it's going to survive and then it's going to rapidly reproduce. It's 
squeak that in there. I don't know if I put a little dot there. There's no why there either. I'm really struggling today. So it's going to survive and reproduce very, very quickly. Bacteria can divide every 20 minutes. Because bacteria reproduce asexually, they guarantee on passing on that resistant allele to their offspring because their offspring are genetically identical to them. So what we're going to see is they're going to pass on the resistance allele to their offspring. And over many, many generations, we're going to end up with a large population of resistant bacteria, which are now much more difficult to treat. And <clears throat> if I say, for example, didn't take my full course of antibiotics, there's a chance that these resistant ones, if they're present, might get a foothold. Their population grows so much that my white blood cells can't defeat them. If there's only one or two of them, not a problem. My white blood cells probably can fight them off. But if I allow, by misusing the antibiotics, their population might grow to such a large level that my white blood cells can no longer de defeat them, destroy them using antibodies. And therefore I have a chance that I could actually pass on those resi resistant bacteria to other people. And it then begins to spread through the population and becomes a big, big problem. And in fact, in hospitals, it's become a really big problem because, of course, that's where everybody who's sick goes. And if they've got the re resistant strains and there's a lot of use of antibiotics and potentially misuse, then that population of bacteria exists in hospitals and it becomes quite a dangerous environment. So they've got to be very, very careful about how they clean and sterilise equipment, surfaces, to make sure to remove any of these resistant bacteria that might be present. And if you ever went to a hospital um, before coronavirus, you would have seen that there were hand sanitizer san uh, signs everywhere and stations to clean your hands. Obviously, this has become kind of widespread now with the sort of coronavirus pandemic. But actually, in hospitals, it was already there to stop things like resistant bacteria from spreading from patient to patient. It's a bit of a problem. So the next bit I want to look at in this lesson, again, I'm keeping this lesson quite short for you guys. All the information's in the PowerPoint for you. This is just kind of a, a little talk component. We're going to look at where we've gone wrong with antibiotics, why, where have we used them incorrectly, and the kind of the impacts that can have. And then for the last bit of the lesson for you guys to do is to kind of create a kind of a little poster, if you like, or other format, however you want to do it, on kind of highlighting what we can do with antibiotics to make sure we don't misuse them in the future and then prevent this process of natural selection happening. Okay. Right, so here's a three examples of where we've misused antibiotics and there's a little task in the lesson for you guys to to do on it so i'm not going to go into epic detail um, first of all doctors may have prescribed antibiotics for viral infections now this might either be through their error and diagnosis or actually often more often than not patients pushing i want antibiotics i'm ill i need, I need antibiotics and then you know, the doctors, the GPs kind of give in. Um, and that's obviously really kind of disastrous because if you've got a viral infection, antibiotics are gonna do no good at all. And of course, you've got natural bacteria living in your body anyway. And there's a chance that you might be you know, selecting for those resistant forms, driving the evolution, encouraging these resistant forms from uh, evolving, which is obviously really quite negative. I don't know if you're aware of this, but at least in the past more particularly, to help livestock like chickens and cows and sheep or whatever to produce them for food, they often use mass overuse antibiotics, basically just give these animals, these, these farm animals, antibiotics whether they're ill or not, to prevent them basically the whole lot from getting bacterial infections. Now of course this creates the perfect storm for natural selection to take over. Any, any bacteria present, if they happen to have that mutation that means they're resistance, are going to proliferate and spread. And a lot of the antibiotic resistant strains have come from agriculture, from farming. And then there's, of course, there's a chance of them entering the food chain or you know, infecting other people. So that's a big, big problem. So one to f um, factor in. And the last one there is one I mentioned earlier, people not taking the full course. When you are given antibiotics correctly for a bacterial infection, make sure that you take those antibiotics as prescribed. As your doctor tells you, take the exact amount per day as recommended and as often as recommended. But even when you're feeling better, you might think, oh, no, I'm all right now, I, shan't, I don't need to take any more. Keep taking them until all of them are gone. That will make sure that any resistant ones that are, sort of have, that are maybe present um, won't stand a chance against your immune system. 
and they will be killed off and there's no chance that they can proliferate and spread all right if we do these things and maybe improve our education you know maybe you weren't aware maybe if you've been antibiotics before maybe the doctor didn't tell you about all this so i think education both here at school and also maybe doctors maybe need to give patients more information on antibiotics is really really important and that's why i wanted you with your little ad campaign activity is to kind of really hammer home these kind of key points about how can we prevent the misuse of antibiotics to stop these evolution of these really kind of deadly resistant ones okay so this is dr p signing off for our first lesson cheers Perfect timing that.